gentlemen. I'm Dr. Francis J. Kelly, the Grand Knight of St. John de Matha Council, Knights of Columbus in Hyattsville, Maryland. And uh, tonight our guest is Professor Roger Aru from the Virginia Polytechnic Institute in Blacksburg, Virginia. Our topic today is Pierre Duhem the, uh, and his work as a historian and as a philosopher. And I want to ask Professor Aru Professor Rue, when did you first become interested in Pierre Duhem? Well, it, it was as a graduate student. I was working on uh, medieval philosophy, and I encountered um, a, a bizarre thesis, uh, which went counter to everything I was taught, the thesis being that uh, somehow science didn't start uh, when everybody else thinks it started in the 17th century, but started as early as uh, and there was actually a date attached to it as early as 1277 when um, the Bishop of Paris, uh, Etienne Tempier, condemned a variety of Aristotelian propositions. Um, this, this was a, a, a the, the, prop the, the thesis that modern science has its birth certificate in 1277 was attached to the name of this of, of a, a, a scientist at the turn of the century named Pierre Duhem, and that was the first time I encountered Pierre Duhem. The thesis I found very puzzling, um, odd, um, unusual, um, bizarre, um, and it's stimulating my curiosity in finding out more about Duhem and why anybody would say such a thing. Um, so I. I delved into uh, medieval science and into Duhem's masterwork, which is uh, um, published over a, a, a period of, um, oh, f more than 40 years, uh, because it was, uh, in fact, mostly published posthumously. Um, the, 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 the work is called uh, Le Système du Monde, or The System of the World. Um, as a subtitle, it, uh, let me translate loosely, it's a history of cosmological doctrines from Plato to Copernicus. Uh, it's nine vo massive volumes detailing medieval science, um, uh, something uh, that people before Jehem did not think existed. And, they, did, and since that time, you've, you've actually translated that and published the translation? Um, I selected uh, from um, volumes uh, s 7, 8, and 9 of uh, the System of the World, the Système du Bond, uh, selections dealing with cosmological topics, uh, theories about infinity, place, time, void, and the, the singularity or plurality of, of the world. Um, in uh, these volumes, 7, 8, and 9, Duhem concentrates on the transition between 13th century science, the science of Thomas Aquinas and other great thinkers in, in the Catholic tradition, to 14th century science, that the science that Duhem himself discovered, which is, of course, also science in, in a Catholic tradition, uh, but it is science um, which reacted to, that, to those peculiar condemnations in 1277, uh, condemnations of Aristotelianism, and thus it's science that changed, moved away from, um, though still a scholastic science, still a science uh, which could easily, which has to be said as uh, science as ancillary to theology, science in the service of theology, mm -hmm but a science that moves away, that moved away from Aristotelianism in very, very many interesting, interesting ways in, in 
uh, so that the theories of infinity in, uh, from the 13th to the 14th century show marked development, uh, similarly with theories of, of, of what is space or, or, or whether there can be another universe. Uh, questions that seem to have been determined in the 13th century, uh, uh, perhaps in, in overly rigid fashion, uh, were then reconsidered, reconceptualized in the 14th century. Uh, the, the, the thinkers reconceptualizing these, these uh, topics were names that are still not known, as names that were unknown in Duhem's time, uh, that Duhem recovered as it, is, as it was. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, it's peculiar that some of these thinkers uh, were only in manuscript in the 14th century and, and came to be edited and printed in the 20th century. Uh, they, they simply didn't live until uh, the present. Uh, th th I should mention these people. Uh, they, I, I guess they will not strike a chord with very many people. They were uh, ph natural philosophers, scientists, uh, uh, teaching at the University of Paris in the 14th century. Uh, the greats were John Buridan, Nicole Orem, Albertus of Saxony, um, Gregory of Rimini. Again, uh, the, these are obviously not thinkers. Uh, uh, as well known as uh, uh, St. Augustine or St. Thomas Aquinas. Uh, but uh, Duhem's thesis was that they were contributed because of the condemnation of the Arist Aristotelianism in the 13th century. They contributed to modern concepts of space and time, uh, to modern theories of uh, motion. And it is their contribution that allowed for what we call the scientific revolution in the 17th century, which is why the, this, this peculiar thesis of moving the birth of science from the 17th century back to the end of the 13th century. And did you find that convincing? Did you find Duhem's thoughts convincing on that? Uh, I, I think he is utterly convincing. Uh, I think um, there, there's, of course, rhetorical flourish about the birth of science. Uh, but w but the, the deep and fundamental historical truth uh, isn't that science was born at any particular time, uh, e e at the 17th century or the 13th century, but what Duhem's really, uh, really getting at is, is that the science of the 14th century is continuous with the science of the 17th century, that uh, the, the, the thinkers were thinking out the same issues, the same problems, that, that science doesn't need to be born. It can be transformed, can be changed, uh, can uh, progress, uh, but it doesn't actually have to have a starting point. It doesn't have to come out of uh, conflict. It doesn't actually have to be uh, revolutionary. It can be continuous over time. And that, I think, is, is, is uh, part of the deep result of, G of Duhem.